Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. In this episode we'll be taking a look at Kohl's. Kohl's has been in the news a lot lately and I realized I haven't been in a Kohl's in forever so I figured I should go check one out. And I picked this location specifically because it's a former Kmart that I grew up going to as a kid. I think the Kmart closed sometime in the early 2000s and then became the Kohl's that we're looking at now. The first Kohl's department store opened in 1962 in Wisconsin and as of today, they have around 1,160 locations, making them the largest department store chain in the United States. Previously, it was J.C. Penney, but Kohl's took the title in 2012. The reason Kohl's has been in the news lately is because due to declining sales, activist investors have actually forced the company to put themselves up for sale and start accepting bids. About a month ago, there were news reports stating that Simon Property Group, who currently owns J.C. Penney, was interested in purchasing Kohl's. However, Kohl's then released their latest quarterly earnings report and it showed more declining sales and I think Simon Property just basically said never mind on the deal. But there are two other bids that have now come in to purchase Kohl's. Those bids have come in from Sycamore Partners and Franchise Group LLC. Sycamore Partners owns a variety of chains such as Staples, Belk, Hot Topic, Torrid. It's, it's actually a pretty long list. Franchise Group owns some chains that you also might be familiar with, such as The Vitamin Shop, Buddy's Home Furnishings, and American Freight, which used to be Sears outlet stores until recently. And speaking of Sears, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting in here. For example, these generic t-shirts like All American Rock Tour. That's the kind of crap I remember seeing in Sears stores when there used to be Sears stores near me. The other thing about this store that's giving me Sears vibes is how empty it is. This, this was filmed on a Sunday afternoon and it was dead. Dead like the Footprint Center probably was during the fourth quarter of that last Suns Mavericks game. These should probably be over in the clearance section. And look, here's even more novelty t-shirts. Seem to be a lot of this kind of stuff here. I noticed the store felt really big, but it was just full of a lot of stuff that I don't think people are interested in buying, at, at least not this much of it. I mean, it felt like 30% of their men's apparel section was t-shirts like this. Kohl's has said they are planning on opening some new smaller format stores soon, and I, I think that's something that can definitely help them because I, I just don't see a market for these generic shirts, at least not right now. People don't have as much disposable income for crap like this like they used to. I think people are more focused on purchasing necessities right now, which are the kind of things that places like Target and Walmart carry, for example, and they also carry this stuff as well. I wouldn't classify anything in this store as a necessity, and I'm sure that's hurting their footfall quite a bit right now. Now, I mentioned earlier the store was kind of throwing off Sears vibes, but I was also kind of getting Mervyn's vibes as well, as, especially when I went into this Izod section. I haven't seen Izod in forever, but it's something I definitely remember seeing at Mervyn's when I was a kid. This, this stuff is just awful. Look at these pink shorts. And they've got them in a vast color assortment. Is anyone coming into Kohl's for these? Maybe for this outfit. This is the perfect outfit right here. The only thing that's missing is some Yacht Rock. I mean, it is kind of cool that this place made me think of Mervyn's for a second, but Mervyn's failed, and I don't think giving off failed department store vibes is a good thing. The toy department is another area where I think Kohl's is going to have a really hard time competing with places like Target and Walmart. I don't know if you've been in the toy department in a Target or Walmart recently, but they're huge, and usually pretty well organized as well. This right here is pretty much the entire Lego section at Kohl's. And then everything else is kind of just haphazardly thrown onto shelves and the pricing is confusing too. We couldn't find prices on a lot of this stuff, but then you see these little electronic signs here and it's Nerf toys, $4.99 to 70 something dollars, Star Wars toys, $7.99 to 84.99. That's, that's not helpful. And if you thought the toy department was small, this appears to be the kind of outdoor barbecue section and it's just a couple of Coleman grills and some other barbecue related stuff. Obviously some department stores carry more of some things than other stores do, but Kohl's kind of tries to seem to almost carry a little bit of everything, but then spend way too much space on weird things like, you know, apparel that I don't know anybody wants and 
a ton of space on bedding and linens over here, it didn't appear that anybody was really looking at this stuff. But maybe if they, you know, carried some more outdoor items and stuff, that might pull some different types of shoppers into the store. I'm really interested to see what Kohl's carries in their new smaller format stores, because if it's smaller stores, but still mostly, you know, linens and apparel and things like that, I don't, I don't think that that's going to be helpful. I definitely don't think things are going to get any easier for Kohl's in the near future between having to compete with Amazon and other internet shopping places and Target and Walmart who are huge and carry all this same stuff and you've also still got Macy's and JCPenney who are desperately trying to survive in the same space. That's a lot to compete with. And it also seems like being the largest department store chain in the country right now isn't necessarily a good thing. Especially when we seem to be in an economy right now where people don't have as much disposable income. And there's a lot of retail square footage here for not a lot of shoppers being inside. Here's another department in this store where it almost seems like, why bother? This is the electronics department and a good chunk of it is dedicated to iHome electronics. There are some video games here, believe it or not. And by some I mean very few, just a couple for each system and then some of these novelty little handheld games. This is another department where it, it seems like they need to make a choice. Either carry a lot of video games or don't carry any at all if this is all you're going to have. If somebody actually came into Kohl's to buy video games, they would see this and then probably never come back to Kohl's again for video games. Whereas if you walk into Target or Walmart, you're going to find a good selection of video games plus all the crappy generic t-shirts they have here. And really I could say that for the entire electronic section here. This other end cap has one Sony device, some headphones, and then everything else is JBL stuff. And then I almost missed this stuff shoved over here. These are those good old record ruiners, these cheap turntables that you can find at a lot of different places. They carry these at Macy's and JCPenney as well, and I would not play any record that I cared about on one of these. And we'll wrap up the electronic section with an instant camera that has branding from a three-year-old movie. I do kind of want to mess around with one of these, but not that one. This is like the worst home decor, and I blame Joanna Gaines for this. It's her fault this crap is so popular. Thankfully here it's just this one small display of this kind of stuff, and it's not the actual Joanna Gaines display that they have at Target with way more crap than that. Coming up ahead is something kind of interesting. It's an Amazon return station. And I find it kind of funny that they put it all the way in the back of the store here, so you have to walk through the whole store to get to it to return something to Amazon. Seems weird to invite the enemy into your store. I'm sure they get some revenue from that, but it doesn't seem like a good idea to remind your customers of Amazon while they're shopping in your store. Most Kohl's stores are not attached to malls, which used to be considered an advantage that they had, but I don't think that really means anything anymore. I mean, this one's not attached to a mall, but I'm still very much getting the feeling of walking around a dead department store in a dead mall. It almost feels like you stumbled into a weird department store section of the back rooms. If you're not familiar with the back rooms, it's a creepy analog horror type series that if you watch it, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I have to say, after spending some time inside this store, I'm surprised that there's actually two companies that are trying to buy this chain. It really was one of the most boring stores I've ever been in. But this is where we're going to end our look at Kohl's. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out my video on what might be the most boring department store I've ever been in. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And also make sure to follow me at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the Retail Archaeology channel.